Welcome everybody to uh, Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura and with me today I have Michael Baker, Jamie Collins, and Rick Joy. They're going to be talking about a few of the uh, projects that Rotary has been involved with. And we'll start with you, Rick. Um, I see you threw a whole bunch of calendars here in front of us. Uh, what is the project specific and how does it relate to Rotary? So tell us about that calendar. Well, it's what we call the Carpentry Calendar. And um, we started it in 2004. So actually 2005 was our first calendar. And it was a project that the Carpentry Morning Rotary Club jumped on and, and wanted to do as, as a fundraiser to raise, raise some money to give back to the Carpentry community. And that's what it's all about, to uh, raise a little money. It's just a fundraiser. And everybody needs a calendar. Um, it's not quite as popular 15 years later as it was, you know, because we all have calendars on our pockets now. But um, people still hang them on the wall, and that's, you know, and it's it's a fun project, and our club really gets behind it and supports it. Sounds good. Uh, you said it's a fundraiser. So, um, how much have you earned with that calendar? Well, um, in the last 10 years. We've we've given back ninety six thousand dollars to what where we ended up last year. Every year we'll give back you know eight to ten thousand dollars to the local Carpinteria community, one one um, facility or another, and hope in this year we're going to go over a hundred thousand. So that, that is amazing. Hundred thousand dollars from selling calendars. <laughs> yeah. So what makes the calendars special? Well, it's a hundred thousand dollar calendar. So you got to tell us about that. Yeah. Well, this was our first one in 2005, and we just happen to have them all here. You won't see them, but um, it's special because it's the money that is made through our Morning Rotary Club. You know, we're able to give back to the community, and that's really a, what Rotary is all about: is helping others and giving back, whether it be locally or around the world. And um, there's a couple things special about it. It's started out more as a, like a photography contest, a little more advertising 10 years ago on the photography contest for, but the pictures that are chosen, they're, they're all Carpinteria. They have to be of Carpinteria. And uh, I've had a couple people throw in a couple that I've had to question them on, <laughs> you know. Um, but they're all pictures that anybody could submit, okay. So we get pictures from a lot of campers in Carpinteria. Um, we get all types, or like I say, anybody can submit a picture. So that kind of makes it fun. And then the other thing, Carpinteria and Santa Barbara being the beautiful beach communities we are, um, we've added the tides in to, to every month. And the tides come in handy. Everybody likes the tides. A lot of people tell me they love the tides um, for all different different reasons. So the pictures, um, are they done by professionals, amateurs? Is it a mix of all of the above? Well, you've had a couple pictures in here, Wade. <laughs> um, but you're a professional. Well, um, thank you. Yeah. Sorry you're on the show, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. The pictures are submitted by, like I say, anybody is welcome to submit a picture. Could be Jamie, could be Mike, um, could be these guys behind the camera right now. <laughs> anybody could submit a picture. And then we have a small group in our Rotary Club that kind of goes through them and I, I weed them out kind of sometime as, as they come through. But anybody can take a picture. So you don't, you could be an amateur or the best photographer out there. Just curious, is there one subject that you've seen a lot of pictures of? Well, what do we see a lot of beautiful sunsets? So <laughs> I, I get a lot of True. that. Yeah. I've had people say, okay, enough beach scenes. Well, it's hard not to take pictures of the beautiful beaches of Carpinteria. <laughs> Um, but I like getting pictures too that are a little uh, abstract and, and people ask where, where, they fr where is that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a mix, really. But as long as it's Carpinteria, it'll, it can get in. And what do the photographers get for the a winning photo? The um, photographers, they usually um, will get a couple calendars <laughs> and uh, maybe a breakfast at the morning Rotary Club. <laughs> And a little recognition, and That's you good. know, a lot of the the photographers are are lo are local, and a lot of are just people from out of town. So it could be anybody. 
but yeah, there's no grand prize or anything. Just <laughs> you know, um, it's been a it's been a fun project for nice. our, for our club. Great. Now the hundred thousand um, dollars. Do you have any specific groups that you want to point out that really appreciated it, used it well? Well, I I think all the groups appreciate it. You know, every, every year. Usually in May of every year, we have a little breakfast, a special breakfast at our club where we'll invite, you know, eight or ten groups that have been nominated to get some of the proceeds from the calendar. So that's once once a year. And, you know, the Boys and Girls Club is represented here today. They've received some monies from us. And I think all the nonprofits, and it's all for nonprofits, okay, the, the money that goes back. And, and they all appreciate it, um, no matter what the amount is. Usually it's pretty standard, but and a lot of times, you know, if we give to a big organization like the city, we'll request that maybe it's for the pool or for the lifeguard program or, you know. So it, it, it gets spread around pretty well. I don't even know of an organization in Carpinteria that has not received some money from the calendar project. That's great. That yeah. is good. Yeah, you name them, they've, they've probably been there. Uh, selection of the the people that you I would say send the benefit funds for each year is that done by the club by a group or yeah we usually we usually send out you know throughout our morning rotary club you know just we ask for suggestions you know from our our members you know do you have a recommendation and we'll get a list of you know ten or twelve maybe not that many but we'll get a list of different nonprofits in Carpinteria and like I say a lot of them have receive the proceeds before and then a, our club kind of looks at it and figures okay we have eight people that we could give to let's give to these eight this year and then so every year we, we just keep giving back and that's what it's all about how many pictures do you get each year uh, submitted uh, as far as the contest portion of it well um, I would say a couple hundred a couple hundred yeah so Maybe it's Pretty competitive. Maybe a hundred to two hundred. <laughs> you know, I, I some people will give me a disc with twenty pictures on it. I've had pic people send me their whole envelope of negatives, and they pick one. You know. <laughs> um, but all the pictures, you know, are of Carpinteria, and like I say, anybody could submit one, which makes it kind of fun. Now, how would they submit, say, if, for example, if somebody out there wanted to submit a photo to you? Is there a direction, or how would they go about doing that? Well, um, that's maybe a little bit word of mouth, or Carpentry of Morning Rotary Club, okay. you know, dot com. Okay. You know, they could get it through the Carpentry of Morning Rotary, which is, you know, fantastic club. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing that. Oh, I do have one more question. You talked about a tide, uh, yes. the tide charts on that. Um, I'm presuming that identifies the highs and low tides in a given day. Yes. Uh, is there anything else that you have um, in there? For example, events, holidays, things like that that are specific? Oh, there's a Wade picture right there. <laughs> um, yes. All, as best we can do, we'll put all the Carpinteria events in here. Okay. okay? And then there's some, you know, other, other marked events, obvious, you know, calendar um, events, but all Cartmaria. But the tides, these are NOAA predictions, okay? These are predictions that are actually, um, you could receive a year or two in advance. So that's how the tides are, you know, they're all predictions by NOAA and they're pretty accurate. I really haven't had anybody come back to me and say, the you're wrong. <laughs> But that is it's true. possible to put them in wrong, so <laughs> that, that's the hardest part. But the tides make it fun for the people, for fishing, surfing, whatever they walking on the beach. How many uh, calendars do you sell annually? Would you guess? Usually about three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. Yeah, and they all get printed in September, so we're, we're the 2016 is close to being complete right now. It goes to print in September. And then we always have it for the first weekend of October for the Avocado Festival. That's our big, you know, we always try to sell a, sure. a bunch then. And then they're sold all throughout Cartagena and different stores and all around. Yeah, but our Rotary Club really is the big part behind it all, you know, making it known and 
getting them out there. Now, is it bought mostly by tourists or actually locals? Well, uh, or is it a both, mix? Both. I'd like to think, and originally in 2005, I figured, well, there's 13,000 <laughs> people in Tartaria, <laughs> so we should be able to sell 13,000. Well, that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they're bought by anybody and everywhere. And I, I ship them all over. I ship them all over the country. Actually, people come back every year. Go, I need my calendar. I need my calendar. Yeah. And I've got some see that. pretty classics that I send to. <laughs> yeah. Now, with a million people coming through the park, uh, the state park each year, that must be a pretty good uh, market for you. Well, it's not for me, and it's and it's not okay for the calendar. It's, <laughs> Sorry, it's not. Um, w we really don't market that as well as maybe we, we could, hmm. you know. But you're right. The state park can sell a lot of them, so we need to okay. do a little push there, <laughs> you know. But definitely. Sounds good. And you said a lot of your money or some of the money actually goes to youth e events and oh, yeah. organizations like Boys and Girls Club. Yes, absolutely. Boys and Girls Club, Girls Inc. And mm -hmm. you name a nonprofit in Carpinteria and they've received money from the Carpinteria calendar. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, thank you for that one. Thanks for sharing the calendar. We'll get back to you, but I don't want to leave these two here uh, thank you, Wade. quiet and hanging out here. Thank so, uh, Michael, Jamie, uh, we've got you involved here with um, the Boys and Girls Club of, uh, is it United, the, the greater Santa Barbara area? Yes, yes, United Boys and Girls Clubs, which we have uh, one of our clubs in Carpentria, uh, Goleta, Lompoc, and the west side of Santa Barbara. We also have a camp up at uh, Camp Whittier on Highway 154, and we have a uh, location up at uh, UCSB campus at Devro, um, and we have five after-school sites as well. So we've got a pretty pretty s scope from Carpentry all the way to Lompoc and pretty much everywhere in between. So, and Jamie's our club director from Carpentry, recently promoted. <laughs> she's <laughs> going to be a director of operations for our organization. So she's right. uh, she's doing great work. So um, your role uh, specific with the uh, Boys <laughs> and Girls Club is I'm the CEO for United Boys and Girls Clubs here in okay. Santa Barbara County. So. Uh, the best way to explain it when people ask me really what my role is, is it's kind of like a superintendent of schools in that uh, Jamie would be where she is right now at Carpentry, kind of like a principal of a school. She's responsible for everything in that building. We call them club directors. Uh, I answer to a board of directors like a school board, and my job is to carry out the day-to-day -day operations for the whole organization. Now, both of you are also uh, Rotarians, and one of the reasons why you're on the show is I'd like to maybe uh, have you share how Rotary fits into what you're doing right now as a director. Well, I've, I've been in Rotary for, this is my 25th year in Rotary. Wow. Um, started in 1990, and lo I, I love it. It's, it's been a tremendous um, support system for the, for the Boys and Girls Clubs. Everywhere I've been, I've always been in Boys and Girls Clubs my whole career. Uh, I used to tell people, uh, you know, kidding, kidding, but it was truthful, was, I love rotary meetings because it's the only time throughout the week where I hung out with adults. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's always with children. So, um, and then you know I've been in clubs where actually the children are more mature than the than the Rotarians. <laughs> but that's a whole other story. Um, yeah, so I think I've been there. That's <laughs> Anaheim. It was Anaheim. Okay. That's, I was, I was gonna, yeah, that's, right. They're like a broadcast this in Anaheim. Um, so no, I, I've uh, I've uh, loved my time with with Rotary and and um, there there isn't a even now. Um, there isn't a week that goes by, and I'm in a new Rotary Club now, but there isn't a week that goes by where I'm out on the phone talking with someone that's in Rotary that's gonna do something for the Boys and Girls Clubs or to get advice from them. Um, just, you know, because you need so many people to support you in, in running Boys and Girls Clubs and, and being able to call on professionals like you and be able to say, hey, I'm thinking about this, what, do, what are your thoughts? You, get, you just get great advice. And you get them from Kiwanians too and, and Lions Club members <laughs> as well. There's a lot of civic groups out there, but. Rotarians are one that I've always been involved with and been proud to do that. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, Jamie, what is your role with the uh, Boys and Girls Clubs, um, your new role? Yeah. F so for the past three years, I've been the club director in Carpinteria and um, actually was first introduced to Rotary um, through the calendar project, um, receiving a donation when I first started. And then um, kind of going forward to now, I'm the director of operations, and hopefully I will be um, inducted that was <laughs> that's in, true. Yep, into that's Rotary it. in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I'm very excited to join Morning Rotary. And um, we've had great support in our local club, not only through the calendar project, but also through 
um, the RILA and the, the youth um, service projects that Rotary kind of pairs um, that matches up to our five core areas through Boys and Girls Clubs and it's a nice partnership. Great. Now you're probably not that new to Rotary. Isn't your no. father kind of involved with that? Yes, <laughs> yeah, my fa father was a charter yeah, member charter for member. the Morning yeah. Rotary. All right, so. great, great. I've always heard about it, never really knew what it was. Okay. <laughs> now I know uh, based on Carpinteria that you guys have one huge event. Um, it's an auction night, something like that. Yes. It seems to be fairly successful. Do you want to talk about that one Yeah, at all? yeah. So um, our annual auction is actually coming up in March this year, March 5th, and we raise about $100,000 for our organization. Wow. Um, every year we hope to grow it, and every year um, in the past three years it's grown immensely, and it's just a great time. Um, we like to bring the fun back in fundraising, so it's a it's a night out on in the Carpinteria community where people can come and enjoy some great drinks, great food, and a live auction that is both rewarding yet entertaining with our auctioneer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good, very good. Um, I've heard great success with the new model you're putting in place there, Michael. Could you tell us, uh, I would say, how large you've grown the uh, organization itself in the last, not even year? <laughs> well, I've been here seven months, um, and the credit really lies with folks like Jamie and the club directors. I've what I've said all along is, I, I, what I felt really good about coming here, and I've been in Boys and Girls my whole life, a whole career, um, I feel really good about the club directors that we have running our clubs and all of our different club sites. I feel even better about our assistant club directors. Um, and we've had tremendous progress in uh, membership. At, at, at most of our clubs, we've, we've almost doubled our average daily attendance, mm -hmm. the kids coming to the clubs. and. I, I feel very confident that you know the number right now about 2,700 members. I think easily by by this time next year we'll be well over 3,000 members and pushing towards that ultimate goal of at least five, six thousand kids in, in wow. the whole county. Wow. Um, and that's to me I think is very achievable. That's great. Now Rotary has um, some, I would say, direction that they have for what they call youth service or new generation. How much of that is implemented in your plan for example ethical training things like that a great 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 question uh, we, we have a program that we run at our at our clubs called Keystone it's a leadership program uh, for teens um, and one of the one of the challenges that we've had across the board in the country with boys and girls clubs is growing team membership it's been a, it's been a declining over the years and there's a real emphasis on exactly that and bringing in mentors and and again I can't think of of um, better mentors than people that are engaged in the community through civic organizations like Rotary, Kiwanis, Lions Club. Uh, they make the best mentors at, at Boys and Girls Clubs. And there's a lot of children that we deal with, that Jamie deals with every single day, who, who um, just need some guidance and so, some positive role models in their lives. Their parents are doing everything they can to make ends meet. They're working, working real hard and they need more people in their lives to help them. And, and the more help we get from Rotary, and providing service projects not only to the club but providing volunteers and encouraging people to get involved in the local Boys and Girls Club or whatever organization, be it Girls Inc., whatever, um, is a huge help. That's good. So um, I've heard that, this is from somebody else, not you, that directors are often the biggest kids out there. Um, <laughs> Jamie is a big kid. <laughs> um, good job. Yeah, she's, 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 but she, she uh, I, what, I, what I get a kick out of is when go to visit the clubs and seeing seeing the staff interacting with the children in such a positive way and I love walking I love all the clubs that we have I really love walking in the Carpinteria Club because w when you walk in that door it just screams boys and girls clubs it's 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 organized chaos um, <laughs> it's, it's it's got staff that care about kids um, interacting with them in a positive way great volunteers um, you got a great club director uh, running that club and tremendous support from the community. It's a, it's a winning combination. And what you're doing, I mean, I can't thank you enough, uh, not only on behalf of Boys and Girls Clubs, for what you've done in the idea here, uh, but what you've done for all the charities in, in Carpinteria. Um, we, we always try to find creative ways to raise money, and, and mm -hmm. this, is, this is definitely one of them. So thank you. Thank, thank you for doing that. Future projects that you have, uh, Boys and Girls Clubs, anything you kind of keyed in on? I know for a fact that uh, we've seen vans yes. driving around all over, mm -hmm. Boys and Girls Club vans. <laughs> anything else besides that? Or Well, I, I, uh, yeah, for me, 
it's always been, again, I've always, my whole career, I've always focused on the kids that can get to the Boys and Girls Club because mom or dad drop them off. Um, those are the easy kids to reach or they ride their bike or however they get there. I've always been concerned about the, the little waves of the world that might live two miles away who can't get to the Boys and Girls Club but desperately need it. What are we doing to help those kids? Mm -hmm. And Jamie and her staff are taking the vehicles that are were being used to pick up kids from school and bring them to the Boys and Girls Club and then those vans would sit for about 23 hours a day. Uh, now using those vehicles to, to go to strategic locations where kids who can't get to the Boys and Girls Club, pick them up, bring them to and from the Boys and Girls Club. And that's something that the new director that's coming on board is going to be really tasked with, hey, this is, this is a major push. I want to see the kids that are living in those more challenged areas in Carpinteria. And they're, they're out there. You know that. You both know that real well. But there's children that um, are living in, in, you know, parents barely getting by. And uh, we need to do everything we can to reach those kids and get them in our facilities. And being open on Saturdays. I don't know how many years it's been, but that, that club hasn't been open on Saturdays for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And Jamie and her staff have done a great job of growing that base. Just, you know, love to think that Saturday, Saturday is a, uh, you know, a, a day that parents are able to, to spend with their kids. But for the parents that we're dealing with, the vast majority of them, it's just another day of the week. They're going to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd love to think that they're able to spend time, but they're just, they're just not. So we need to fill that void. Great. There was a project, and I don't know if you're familiar with this, um, done by one of the local Rotary Clubs. It was a matching grant, a global grant, where $26,000, $27,000 was put into funds for um, Camp Whittier, I believe. Did you hear anything about that? Well, Were you aware of Yeah, actually, I believe that's the Sunrise Rotary Club. Uh, right. that, that, uh, and they've been, uh, it's Santa Barbara Sunrise, and they've been tremendous in uh, supporting our Camp Whittier, 55-acre mm -hmm. camp up in... Uh, Highway 154, beautiful campsite. Every year they do a service project up there. Uh, they put they put an eye wash station in there for us uh, for um, for safety reasons. They've done first aid. Uh, they they renovated um, some some of the cabins over the years. They put in drinking fountains. I mean they've done a, they've done a lot of work for us. Um, but uh, yeah, if it wasn't for the Rotary that Rotary Club uh, that club that campsite would be in much much worse shape than it is right now. No question about it. I heard those funds actually came from Korea. Did you realize that? Didn't know that. No, that <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, it was a partnering uh, district that we worked with uh, in Korea. Actually, um, we could not fund an international project. We have to have it money come in from out of the area. So it was actually Korea that put that money forward. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, do they ever come here to visit? We do. do. Uh, every year, we, we exchange we exchange visits well, with we governors. we got to get them to come up here Sounds and, good. and take them to camp and get them both. They'll be here in October. Great. Out well, let's make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very good. Um, anything else that you would like to share? How, how Rotary's changed your life, how it's benefited, and what you're using from that Rotary to, I would say, in your professional lives and personal lives? Me personally, I, and I know Jamie's, Jamie's new to Rotary, but uh, I know she's going to fit in great. And she's going to do a great job with Rotary. Um, I, s s some of my best friends in, in my life I've met in Rotary. Um, people to this day, I, I, I was in Anaheim for 14 and a half years, and I, I loved my time there. I loved it. And, and w besides working the Boys and Girls, I've identified with, with the Rotarians. I mean, they were re we were a really good group of people there. And I loved working with them. Um, and uh, like I said, every, every week I'm able to pick up that phone and, and, and uh, talk to somebody to get, to get advice. So Rotary's had a deep impact in my life. But I will tell you this, if it wasn't for Rotary, um, we had a program in my high school, a job shadow program. And um, the ge gentleman I got matched up with was a banker. And um, I shadowed him for the afternoon, and I made a decision right then and there. There's no way I'm going to be a banker. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Um, so Rotary really turned me into nonprofit. Um, so that was that's my Rotary well, that's one of my great. stories. Thank you. Yeah. How about you, Jamie? I know you're uh, going to be fairly new to Rotary, but you've had that in your life for I, a while. Yeah, I'm newer, but um, you know, I wouldn't align myself with an organization that didn't go along with my personal values and beliefs, and you know, service above self. That's what I do or what I think I do <laughs> um, every day in my profession and um, it's just so nice too to be tied with an organization that is so similarly aligned with what Boys and Girls Clubs stand for and our you know character and leadership programs and our healthy lifestyles through all the international projects you guys do with clean water and you know education and you know it so clearly just ties into what we're doing so I'm excited to introduce our kids 
um, to kind of other ways that they can give back to our community. Very good, thank you. Yeah. Rick. Well, um, I've been Rotary for 15 years now, and it, it is just a great organization, mainly because of the people that are in it. And there's no color to Rotary. I think you told me that once, Wade, and, it's, and I really believe that, you know, that's what's one thing that's very special. You're welcome anywhere in the world if you are a Rotarian. And it's for anybody that chooses to be a Rotarian, you know, and, and is invited in by a, another person. This calendar project, like, you know, we talk about it being a fundraiser. Um, it's not really to raise money for our club because we're not about that. We're about raising money to give back, whether it be locally or anywhere in the world to other people that need it. And that's what Rotary done for me, just great thing. Great. Any upcoming events? Yes, uh, October 10th. Uh, 2015 this year well, we're having our annual gala at Deckers uh, you can learn more about the program and uh, the event at uh, unitedbg.org that's u-n-i-t-e-d-b-g.org <laughs> okay very good anything else uh, Rick you got anything new coming up here no just club got anything cooking well our club always has stuff cooking <laughs> yeah. but uh, I'll just look forward to our meeting tomorrow morning and you know getting this 2016 calendar out and keeping the club going and having Jamie as our new member here in a couple <laughs> weeks. You know, which will be wonderful. So you said the calendars will be available. First up would be Avocado Fest. Is yeah. that the plans? About in the September we should have them okay. all printed out. Okay. Yeah. And when is the Avocado Fest? Do you know those dates? First week in I think it's second, third and fourth mm -hmm. of October. O of October. I'll tell you. <laughs> right here. Right, yeah, first week in October. And what's October. the ties look like? <laughs> yeah. Well, right now they're going out. No. <laughs> so, yeah, it's the first weekend of October every year. So, yes, yeah, Friday the 2nd, Saturday the 3rd, and Sunday the 4th. Perfect. Perfect. So. And you guys have a booth there selling those? Yeah. Okay. That picture is appropriate, too. <laughs> that, that is appropriate. <laughs> Very appropriate. Yeah, we have a, a booth and where we sell the lights and the calendars. And okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very good. So with that, uh, thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We sure appreciate your time, and we appreciate all you do. Um, we will see you next time. In the meantime, take a look at Rotary, see what they're doing. There's some outstanding things going on, and it's my opinion and many of the Rotarians that we are making a difference in this world. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. Uh,